The Column of Trajan, which was uh, constructed and carved in the first two decades of the second century uh, as a monument to the Emperor Trajan, uh, is um, the first monument of its sort that we know of, that is a, a column with a story, reliefs of a story being told uh, circling around it. And there is no previous example of a column with this kind of carving on it, and nor is there any previous example of Roman sculptors um, doing such a storytelling type of a sculpture. I mean, it's almost <laughs> a little bit like a comic book in, in, in effect. Now, um, as I said, it is Carrara marble, um, been clearly identified as Carrara marble. It has, it is a slightly off-white, slightly grayish marble. That is, it is not statuary marble, which is ivory white. It is what you would basically call Carrara ordinario, but it is a very good example of it because there are no streaks of, of color in it. The blocks would have been quarried as cylinders, slightly larger than the actual size of the cylinders, um, and then brought down the mountain, probably on some sort of sledge uh, way, and then taken out to where they loaded the blocks onto the ships that took them down to, the, um, uh, to Ostia. The blocks would have brought in, been brought into the port of Ostia and then transshipped onto uh, barges, which would have brought them up to what we call the Marmorata. The column is at one end of Trajan's Forum, and so they would have been uh, probably brought around the Capitoline and to an area there, uh, and there was probably the main, the main marble holding and construction area there. Now, uh, what is most likely that happened is that they carved the stairway into the drum before they put the drum up. We do not know this for sure, but it seems the most likely thing. That is, um, and the stairway is very clearly designed because it is eight steps, with the top step being exactly at the level of the top of the uh, um, of the drum. Now, this means that the steps on the different drums were very slightly different because because the drum heights vary between 150 centimeters and 158 centimeters. So that in the process, they, what they did, it would seem, is simply divide the space into eight for, for the steps. Now, presumably, the first thing that was carved, once they put the block in place, um, were, were the windows. And the windows are very evenly spaced. And one of the characteristics that, that we have so far is that in all architectural sense, the things are very carefully measured and put together so that we have the windows neatly placed where the stairway is going up around on four sides. And the only thing is that the windows had to have been carved after the blocks were put in place because in some cases the windows cut across between two blocks so that they could have only been carved after they were put in place. The carving is incredibly precise, down to the fact the figures are generally about in the area between a third and a half life size. That is, the figures run between, um, let's say, 58 or 59 centimeters high to as high as 75 centimeters high, and they vary in, in, in height. Um, and you have the carving is so delicate that even the fingernails on the soldiers are, are, are carved, something that is not visible from beyond about three feet. And every detail is, is, is treated this way. One of the questions is, is how was it designed? And people have presumed that it might have been a drawing. I think this is impossible. And the other problem is, that if it were a drawing, why is it that the spiral goes up and down and varies? It leaps up over heads and then goes down and up so that the variation on the height of the spiral goes all the way from 79 centimeters 
um, at 1.2, the highest ones are of 145 centimeters. And it is continuously moving up and down as if it is being designed as it goes along. And it, if this were true of a drawing, uh, this would not be true of a, of a drawing, it is clearly not that they would not have made a plaster model. This is just too immense and it's ridiculous. And besides that, the whole thing looks like it was being composed as they went along. The interesting question is um, when, how this carving went along. And from the looks of it, the way it went along was that two or three blocks would be put in place and then the sculptors started work. Because the, this is especially visible near the very top. When the third from the top um, drum, the spiral line at one point reaches the top of the drum and then runs along for a third of the way around the drum right at the top of the drum and then suddenly leaps up, and it leaps up to a higher height than the spirals ever before, which it, it leaps up to 140 to 145 centimeters. So the impression we have is that they had all but the last two drums on, the carvers got to the top of that drum and just kept carving by making the spiral sh smaller and smaller because the, the bottom of it was going up and the top of it was going level. Then the last two drums were put on and they suddenly saw that they had more space than they had calculated on, than they had worked out, so they could jump up to a higher level of spiral than anywhere below because the highest level below is generally is around 128. So that also means that they did not make a calculation of length to height of spiral. And you want to remember that as the spiral tends, it goes up, to about the 13th spiral, uh, to the 13th spiral it goes up varying between about 118 and 128. On the 13th spiral, it starts to go down and gets as low as at one point only 79 centimeters high. And what this looks like is that they were worried that they wouldn't have enough space for the whole story. So if you make the spiral shorter, it extends the length of the, of, the total, um, of the total spiral. Another sign that they were carving from the bottom up is that in several places, elements of the lower relief cross over and go on top of elements of the level above it. For instance, there are three regions, uh, three legionary, uh, the poles with the legionary symbols on them, which cross the spiral line and go up to the knee of the soldier on the spiral above it. Now, that they are slightly higher in relief than the leg behind them so that they were obviously carved first so that the carver working up is not putting in a top spot, the top of his spiral line. He is carving a relief, trying to keep it more or less of the same height, but it sticks up in that one place. The carver coming along afterwards puts the spiral in, puts a spiral line, which is a, a line maybe a couple of centimeters thick. The carvers um, were not working with a precise measurement, and this is interesting if we look over at the column of Marcus Aurelius, because on the column of Marcus Aurelius they did work it out exactly. The uh, um, spirals are exactly the same height on the column of Marcus Aurelius, and the spiral line goes up equally, so they worked it out ahead of time there. They did not work it out. Now, we must finally remember that one of the characteristics we have here is that nothing like this had ever before been done. So these sculptors not only have to be creative in their use of figures and forms, but they had to be creative in how to put the composition onto a, uh, a column. The sculptors working on the uh, column of Trajan were, there is no attempt to create a perfectly smooth surface so that we can read where, there is, where it is still visible, we can read the tool marks and the tools being used on the column were the flat chisel, the round-headed chisel, the rasp, and the drill. We have a few small places of lack of finish where there are some signs of the point chisel, 
and then the interior stairway is all finished with a tooth chisel. So we have the basic tools of carving uh, there being used. It is interesting that they do a certain amount of texture in the carving. That is, the leaves are carved with a round-headed chisel so that they have some texture as leaves, and then there's drilling, and they are carved extremely delicately to the extent that there are places where there are branches carved in the round, and these branches are maybe two millimeters thick. Uh, so they were carving with extreme delicacy and care, but then also uh, the flesh was generally uh, finished with a rasp, and the background was, but uh, in some parts the flesh was finished with a flat chisel, and the armor and various things were, were finished with a flat chisel. So it is very careful carving, but no attempt to go beyond the rasp as far as smoothing of the stone, and that only done on particular surfaces. The few bits of unfinish, one can see that the method of carving was to carve the figures first and then to carve the background around them so that it was done much the way um, sarcophagus carving was done at that period. That is, it's a slowly working into the stone and the background being carved last of all. Then we have division of workmanship, as far as we can tell. We, we, it seems like you had that the figurative carvers would work out the general composition and that then other carvers would come in and do the background. And on the architect, the carving of architectural buildings, there are two different carvers at least, because one carver does, uh, makes no attempt to show any kind of perspective in the layout of the buildings, the towns and the cities behind them. And another carver does attempt to use per perspective. It seems from the frequency of the drill work and everything, one presumes that the, um, that, that the vegetation carvers were, a, was a special, were specialists who did that carving. So what we can see is a certain sense of a workshop where there are master carvers doing the figures, and then there are um, other carvers who are specializing in the various forms of the background. We know this partly by making reference to the carving of sarcophagi, which is simple, and partly because there are a very few, uh, very rare on it that there's unfinished, but there are very there are a few areas where one can see that the head and shoulders of a figure are being carved before the background that is are, are around it. Um, I, in studying the thing, estimated that there may have been five master carvers. There is some there are some signs of a difference in a slight difference in style, very few as a matter of fact, and it is interesting to the extent that, to this extent, that there are very few um, feelings that there are a different, a slightly different style, but for instance, there is one master carver who when he carves the soldiers galloping forward on horseback, puts them in very neat lines and organized one behind the other. And there are other carvers who don't do that, who do them in a very mixed uh, fashion in which there is no uh, careful composition. Now, one of the interesting characteristics of the uh, sculpture on the column is that there are a whole series of figures going all the way up where uh, they should be holding a sword or a spear or an ax and they are not. They have not carved them in. What, the, what some of them have is holes drilled, and um, uh, holes drilled for holding these elements, and at least one of the holes they have found traces of bronze. So the presumption is that the carvers knew that bronze, probably gilded tools, were going to be added. Oddly enough, there are more empty hands than there are holes in the hands, almost twice the number. So that the carvers knew that they were to leave, um, they were to leave hands free for placing axes or swords or bows. 
Um, but then that they were never informed of how much metal there was or how many would be put in uh, 